Okay, so welcome to another podcast from Come What May. And today we have Matt Schwentek. And Matt is a German-born intimacy expert and facilitator. Hello, Matt. Hi, Steve. Uh, his own journey began in 1997 at the age of 29. And via his own personal practice and direct experience, he has nurtured an ethos of communication, love, and empowerment with absolute integrity. With Somatic Consent, he went on to create the first Consent Academy of its kind. Born with a desire to impact and innovate, he is a pioneer in the global field of holistic sexual healing, pleasure, de-armoring, and community empowerment. Matt has trained thousands of practitioners and individuals from all over the world in his methodologies, programs, and events. And he teaches at international events, sharing his expertise on the topics of conscious leadership, relating and personal transformation, which is actually where Matt and I met. He is um, committed to supporting conscious change makers and professionals, enabling them to transform into healthy role models and embodied leaders. And his holistic facilitation supports people to overcome self-sabotage, low self-esteem and limiting beliefs so that they too can live more pleasurable, authentic, confident lives, true to their own individual purpose. Matt's clients go on to create what they desire and what they deserve while contributing to positive change. And over the last 20 plus years, Matt has traveled to over 60 countries, teaching and learning from the most integrated leaders, teachers, and masters of pleasure and conscious development. So welcome again, Matt. It's great to have you here. I'm super excited at what's going to unfold in the next 60 minutes. And um, yeah, I'd just like to say hello. And what would you like to share with the world? Mm, hi, and um, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm feeling really excited. You just sent me the link of that, what you're cooking up with this platform. And I'm really excited to contribute to man's development and um, putting my experience and everything that I've found into the pot so that um, men and women and everybody in between has the chance to just like cherry pick the raisins out and mm -hmm. uh, just like make their life kind of a better version. And, uh, thanks for having me. Yay to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just like for every listener as well, um, thanks for joining and thanks for listening. And I would just like do one little thing um, in the beginning and that's just like owning up how I feel specifically having an interview or when I'm doing a teaching or coaching is always this part that we don't want to share this vulnerable feeling kind of just like this oh my god how 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 do I sound and how do I look and this feeling of awkwardness not being good enough you know this nervousness this feeling in the belly just like oh kind of and I have that every time I have that right now so it doesn't matter what I do and that keeps so many men and people all over the world away from their biggest gift to share because they're running against this internal block. Mm. And I would like to own up to that, that we all have that. And the more I teach, the more I coach, the more I learn, the more intense it gets. So some people think there's something to heal. We have to get rid of that. This mm. has become my biggest ally. And I would like to tap into that right now that we can actually be with that because this will come back again and again for all of us. And there's one little meditation that I would like to share before yeah. we begin. And um, that is kind of neutralizing on a uh, neuro um, hormonal level our uh, nervous system to kind of finding this homeostasis of relaxation and ease and connection. Wonderful. And this takes about three minutes or so and the invitation is taking something in your hands whatever that is i have a little wooden ball here sometimes i'm laying that's perfect it can be anything right. so and it doesn't really matter what it is so i put a cushion here on my lap nobody has to do it but it helps me to relax my shoulders and important is that the shoulders relax that we kind of lean back that the spine is relaxed so that our nervous system is not set up for work so that we are set up for a place of ease mm -hmm. and the most important thing is when we have that in our hands is that we bypass immediately kind of the rational cognitive thinking structure of what it is what it's for what's the meaning of it and what are we using it for 
And instead of that, we're just going straight in, touching it and feeling it with our skin, with our hands. So we're slightly stroking over with the object our, over our skin or with our hand over the object. And the invitation is here to slow down by half and by half again. So get really slowly that we find this tinglish, nearly electromagnetic, pleasant sensation. And it can be somewhere between your fingers or on the palm or the fingertips or the nail beds, somewhere where it feels good to you individually. And when you find a spot that is kind of delicious and nourishing, then I invite you just to stay there for a minute or two, just, just to feel it. And the invitation is as well to experiment with eyes open, eyes closed. And wherever your mind goes or your feelings come up, just bring it straight back to the sensation there in the skin. And whatever occurs in your body, in your psyche, it's all welcome. Um. And bring it straight back. So I just made that sigh. It's a good sign for the nervous system to regulate. And then stay there a little bit longer in your own way. Your own experience. Nothing to get here, nowhere to go, nothing to produce, nothing to give, just your action for your own experience of joy and pleasure. Simple, easy. Ah, all right. And um, during this entire interview, during this entire conversation that we have, I invite you to keep that in your hands or keep something in your hands and continue doing that. So just feeling it and bring your awareness, your attention in between back to the sensation there in your hands. And what that does is, and I explained during that interview what it does to our body, to our nervous system, to our psyche, what that has to do with spiritual and personal development, what does has to do with lovemaking, what does it has to do with our sexuality, what does it has to do with our communication. Um, it's absolutely mind-blowing and fantastic. So this little exercise has changed my life and has changed the life of this many thousand people I've been working with you were talking about in the bios. And... Um, and if this is what people can get out of that here today, um, you're on the right track to change your life in an absolutely uh, mind-blowing way to the better. Mm, wonderful. This is yeah. a question to you back before I start talking. How does it feel in your body when you did that now for this minute or so or two minutes? I, it's funny because my mind was checking in, oh, what can I say about this afterwards? You know, in the in the interview. <clears throat> but what I, what I really noticed was when we started, I was kind of sitting like this, with my hands in between my legs, and my feet um, up on my toes. Mm -hmm. And when you invited me to sit back and to focus more on this, my feet naturally just um, flattened on the floor, mm -hmm. and then my legs relaxed. Mm. back relaxed my shoulders relaxed and when you took that breath it invited me to take a deeper breath without even asking me to and that brought a lot of relaxation in my mm -hmm. body so everything just slowed down mm -hmm. and then what came up was 
afterwards, then the mind kicked in. Uh, it's so important to do this before lovemaking. Mm -hmm. How often do we, how often do I, perhaps others, go into lovemaking before I'm actually connected mm -hmm. and relaxed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I've done this practice before. It's super simple. And thank you for the invitation to go there again. Mm. You're very welcome. So this is what I mainly want to talk about and the effect of this structure in our entire nervous system and how that can impact all areas of life. Mm -hmm. And I know that many men struggle specifically in our age group, you know, around 40, 50 ish, something like that. They mm -hmm. struggle with, you know, performance anxiety in sexuality. They struggle with um, getting hard. They struggle with um, um, premature ejaculation, even though uh, they're not getting hard anymore, uh, you know, and there are so many different themes. And, you know, this little exercise, I want to tell, uh, tell a little bit about that, what is happening in the nervous system and in the body. Is So when we do that, um, and we're just feeling it in a gentle way, in a soft, relaxing way, there, there's so many nerve ending in our fingers, in our skin, than anywhere else in our body except our mouth and our genitals. Mm. But when the hands will get it, the rest of the body will get it because there's such a big part of our brain dedicated to our hands. Mm. And when we actually allow that to feel, we releasing for this short amount of time in our central brain a neurotransmitter hormone that calls oxytocin. Mm. Yeah. So this, when we kiss, cuddle, feel cozy, and when we just, uh, you know, feeling comfy with another person. When we connect it, it's a, it's, it's a connection, the love, the cuddle hormone. Mm. Yeah. And we have that when we're making connection with that one here. And what oxytocin does in our brain, it's kind of inhibiting or blocking the release of cortisol and adrenaline from our fight flight center. Mm. And that in itself is regulating our nervous system in that state of relaxation and ease. Mm. Yeah. So the and the the fight flight center is firing about four times a second cortisol and adrenaline to keep us alert what's going on. You know, we are easier to control when we are on fear. When yeah. our cortisol levels are high and when we're getting controlled by um, satisfactory um reward behavior that mm. kind of keeps us in the place of being on the loop of doing something so we like can buy phones right yeah the phones or just like just having a cigarette or drinking coffee or alcohol you know all this kind of reward behavior but oxytocin is neutralizing this behavior on a, on a neurological level and what it does it just it rises our serotonin level that is responsible for our contentment and happiness. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so an important thing is just that we don't want to make any kind of stuff wrong about, you know, dopamine releasing stuff. So we need dopamine if we are, for example, having a goal or we want to um, go towards an um, uh like creating something in the world that's meaningful, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but not the sexual goal. I mean, the 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 idea of being in connection with our purpose. But this mm -hmm. one here brings us, and that's the most important piece. It brings us into the present moment, mm -hmm. and that's a question to all these men out there. How often have you heard from women or other people? Can't you be present with me? Exactly. When this is in your nervous system active, there's no way you cannot be present because it just kicks you straight in the moment right here, right now, with any distraction. Mm. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. And I'm just realizing how, because I also work with kids with developmental disorders and various disabilities and special educational needs. And... Um, <clears throat> it's a really important part of their ability to pay attention is to have a fiddly, something to fiddle with. Yeah. For typical, typically neurologically typical people or kids, 
teachers are like, no, you cannot have something in your hand while I'm talking to you because you're not paying attention. And so it's really, it's really reinforced my understanding of how important it is and that it, it keeps me here with you right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can go on a, on any kind of story and tantrum in the world and talking about anything, but mm -hmm. being present with the person we are with, this is the most important um, uh, value that we can have when we connect with somebody else. And specifically mm -hmm. when it comes to um, proximity and when it comes to themes that are important for us men, and that's how the heck are we doing it in bed and how are we doing it in lovemaking and how are we doing it in sexuality and how are we doing it uh, in a sustainable way, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said that before, when your hands will get that, your genitals will get that. And that's the most important piece, you know, just yeah. when we capable of translating this very little sensation in our hands, mm. um, not intellectually, but neurologically, by the sensation, what we are aware of when we're doing that with our hands, when we can feel that with our dick mm. while we are in lovemaking, yeah. then we don't have to hunt the goal. Mm. We're releasing tons of oxytocin, we're creating the connection, mm. and we are in proximity and presence with our partner in lovemaking. Mm. So would you say then that this, this simple practice would be a great foundation for men who are having issues with erectile function, with ability to sustain or to even get an erection, um, who are ejaculating sooner than they want to? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you, when you look into the um, anatomy of sexuality specifically for people with a penis and balls um you know our nervous system is wired that way so if anybody who is interested in the function of the nervous system we can put that at the end i just made a really nice little video about the function of the nervous system the, uh, that is explaining the polyvagal theory mm. and there's one specific neurological state in our nervous system and that's the only state where erection and sexual encounter is possible oh tell me so it, it's a so-called hybrid state between social engagement so eye contact and proximity and mm. mobilization so sympathetic in a safe way mm. yeah so we can actually walk and talk and being connected and what that needs is slow movement Mm. Yeah. So whenever our nervous system is on high alert, so when we are high on cortisol and adrenaline, mm. what is literally this dopamine loop is doing to our nervous system, because dopamine and dopamine release is part of the um, um, uh, uh, neurological chain of um, creating anxiety in our body. Mm. Yeah. And whenever we're on this anxiety side of our nervous system, our serotonin and our oxytocin level is diminished. Mm -hmm. And we are not even close to this state where we can get or maintain an erection. Mm. Yeah. So, so we need to neutralize our nervous system into that state. Mm. And that happens through oxytocin. Yeah. It's magic. Or <laughs> erection pills. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, and I've been I, I vote for oxytocin. I've done <laughs> I'm, all, pills. I'm all in for oxytocin. <laughs> uh, oxytocin, you know. Of course, you know we are all crazy, and now you are as crazy as I am. And we just we need to try everything before we can speak about stuff. And of course, I've tried Viagra. Of course, I've tried all yeah. kind of erections. I took it when I didn't even need it, just to see what it like. <laughs> right. So, so I tried them, and the 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 functionality is of just like. Yeah, of course. I'm I'm really in a weird state. I'm kind of just, but I have an erection, and just like I'm not even connected to that <laughs> erection. <laughs> of course, I can perform and fuck. It's just like, yeah, but I'm not really present in what's going on between my legs. Well, it's it's interesting that you brought up this. Um, I find this a really interesting topic of performance anxiety, and you and you mentioned. I mean, I I also want to talk to you about consent because the consent academy and why that's important. I think is a really, really 
a super important field, not just for men, but for everybody, for, mm -hmm. for everyone in between, but your binary, you know, man and woman, how they relate to each other. Consent is not just for men, it's for everybody to enjoy more. And I really want to get to that. However, you brought something up about men of our age and, and that it, it's a common issue to have some kind of erectile dysfunction, let's call it, or, when it's not working the way we want. And yet, actually, there is also a huge amount of teenagers and young men, young adults, who are suffering from this. And a couple of my coaching clients have really strong um, issues in this area, mm. and also related to <clears throat> porn addiction. And it's all, you know, this is actually it. young boys and young men are using Viagra because they're having erectile issues. Mm -hmm. Like what's going on there in your... Yeah, this is absolutely crazy, you know. And I started actually really sticking my nose into that when I was, you know, in my so-called awakening, my sexual awakening with, with when I was 28 or 29 or something. Mm -hmm. And I just read a, a book that calls Peace Between the Sheet. That's from, I think, um, Manuel Robinson, when I remember that right. Or... Maybe we'll think, put it in the in the link. Yeah, link to and it. and and she was she was um, in connection um, with a lover, Gary Wilson is his name, and he he was a physicist, I think, but he just researched all this kind of neurotransmitter release, what happens in the brain when we are climaxing, so mm -hmm. your brain on orgasm, and then he just looked deeper, your brain on porn and what is happening, and the release of dopamine and uh, what is happening in the dysfunction of that um and there's right now a, a neuro a scientist out there you find him on youtube his name name is huberman and he talks about that in detail what is happening and but to break that down in just like a few words is when you're watching porn and you masturbate you literally bypass the somatic experience of the body Mm. and the entire sexual stimuli is only getting visualized so it just goes in through the eyes and straight into the brain mm. and everything that happens with our hands on, on our genitals is kind of a peripheral byproduct wow but what we do is when we ejaculate the orgasm does not happen in the genitals the orgasm happens in the brain and specifically um oops, I love, and i have a hair here <laughs> speaks specifically related to the reward system yeah you know and the reward system mm, is still there the hair. <laughs> horrible sorry i need to just drink it. it it's all right you just deal with the hair <laughs> <clears throat> so so the reward system apologies the reward system <laughs> is um producing um a lot of dopamine to actually get this reward, to get this satisfaction, mm -hmm. you know? And then when we climax with this level, we need for the next time a tiny little bit more of stimuli. Mm -hmm. We need a little bit more intense video. We need more visual um, arousing input. Uh. And what that does, it, it, just, it levels up our uh, reward circuit to a state that we cannot reach when we are with a woman naked in a room anymore. Mm. Yeah? And what that does is we don't get turned on or young men don't get turned on because their reward center is so um, vulnerable and sensitive for this visual stimuli, much more than um, older men. Mm -hmm. uh, and that takes for young men a much more impact to get over this dopamine imbalance and come back to a neutral level of dopamine that they when they're in connection with a woman again that they can get hard mm. and th yeah. there's a is a really nice um, um reset mechanism that i'm using for young men or specifically for for all men and i've done that as well i've i had in the last year probably 10 coaching clients as well healing erectile dysfunction from young men mid-20 yeah till somebody in their mid 60s you know mm -hmm. and and all of them got their boner back and that's really it's, 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 a, it's a fantastic 
it's a fantastic mechanism. It works. And it has all to do with this dopamine imbalance in the system. Wow, wonderful. Wonderful. <clears throat> so this is definitely something that you have and that you can help men with. Absolutely. Like yeah. all is not lost, right? Because a lot of no. men, I also work with men and I find myself and I hear a lot from men is they just don't reach out for help. And especially something around the cock and its ability to get hard is such a vulnerable area. Yeah. Um, for men, for myself, I know also. So to actually reach out and say, hey, I need some help in this area is not something that men are as <clears throat> traditionally as um, likely to do as a woman because of the way that they're conditioned. Yeah, I mean, for, for women, it's a natural act. They're talking with other women about their sexual issues and problems. And they're, you know, they're, they're so much more evolved and advanced in the way of how they communicate vulnerable themes in their life. And mm -hmm. we men, we, you know, we have never learned that. We, yeah. we, have, we have never really practiced that. And we are kind of unalphabets in intimacy and vulnerability and open up to this, to this core of that. And then, you know, when we don't know who to ask, we are so yeah. kind of scientifically obedient that we, when we ask somebody, we ask the expert, what is literally the urologist, you know, the doctor. Yeah. And they say, just like you're over a certain age, when you're over 40 or in a certain age, your nitric oxide level is normally increasing. And all what you can do is you have to take a nitric oxide enhancer that makes your erection coming back. And the easiest way is you just take a medication and that's this Sindenfalla Viagra. And you have to be with that. This is how it is. And then this uh, uh, subscription happens and, and people start Goodbye. taking them. It's, wow. it's, it's, absolutely, it's, it's absolutely crazy. So what would you say then to a man who's who's on tablets like this or who is perhaps um, avoiding sexual contact because they're really they're really afraid of, of not being able to perform? What would you yeah. say to them then? You know, the, the, the thing is, and um, uh, in a, in a, it's, it's kind of hard to describe that here right now. Because mm. I would I would probably do a, a, a disservice to men who, who's suffering from that, because what that needs this reset. Even if I'm talking about that here right now, but this reset needs a time, yeah, that allows the nervous system to recover and reboot mm. in, um, uh, uh, you know guidance from somebody who can guide you through the emotional stuff that will come up and this reset takes normally up to three weeks to three months okay perfect that's yeah. what i was looking for more than yeah. uh, not asking for the exact techniques it's more like you know if a man is is suffering with this and they haven't asked anyone yet what i hear from you is like hey it's completely possible to regain all of that function yeah. through some simple practices over a consistent period of time. Yeah, and you know, this is exactly, um, there are certain ways of skills and techniques that are needed. And this is what I normally do when I'm having a conversation with a man. I just really do an anamnese where I just really go into the core details of what's the behavior, what's really going on, where are you at? And it's absolutely possible. And if you're dedicated and you have this uh, three, uh, uh, weeks to three months patience in, in yourself and say, okay, I just want to get my natural erection back. Yeah. You, we will get it back. I have no doubts about that. And, you know, uh, um, you know, if there is not a really kind of medical issue um, mm -hmm. behind that, um, every man, every man can get their erection back. I'm absolutely yeah, yeah. clear about More that. More erections. That's what we More erections. A healing, loving, um, fully heart connected cock that feels powerful and um, and enlightened to the woman. Wow, oh, sounds good. <laughs> Enlightening to the woman. Okay, let's talk about the consent piece, right? <laughs> yeah. No, let's talk more about erections. Uh, let's yeah, talk, about, love, love talk a bit more about the consent and your academy and and why you you said that actually it's the first academy of its kind, and and I'm like really. Yeah, so that would be really interesting to dive a little deeper into that. Yeah. So let's talk about consent. 
Yeah. Um, so I've been a student of Betty Martin and the Wheel of Consent since 2014. So I have traveling with her around the world and we have been going um, through, I think, 25 uh, workshops uh, where I was co-facilitating and assisting her mm. as um, um, we were teaching facilitator and practitioners. And yeah. Um, so I just she's really, the creator of the wheel of consent. She's the creator of the wheel of consent, <laughs> right? And so we just really went to the core, and we started in 2018 to create the school of consent um, uh, in the first place. And uh, then in 2019, I actually started to recognize one specific theme in the wheel of consent that was missing. I could not engage with, and mm -hmm. I talk about that a little bit more in a in a in a bit. And uh, and she, in uh, her own expression of her own research, um, was not really interested in bringing it to white cis male um, uh, agenda. You know, ah, okay. So she was more interested in teaching it to women and teaching it to queer people and to this entire community that is um, differently privileged. You know? okay. And um, and that was really a piece of mine where I felt, you know, I am a white, male, cisgendered person, you know, mm -hmm. and that does not mean that I'm identified with that, but um, I have my own experience as as such, and I have so much knowledge to share that I had to put under the carpet when I was teaching there. And I said, okay, I have to redo that and recreate that in a way that people like me and you and all other men out there who's suffering so much, mm -hmm. that they having a lobby actually to entering that space of um, embodiment and um, and vulnerability and you know uh, uh, development the same way like anybody else so we cannot be so um, excluded because we are the the um do you say the majority core of the suffering in the world you know yeah, yeah the cause and the <laughs> and the core yeah right and and you know and i have to, i had to say you know, I'm sorry, I'm suffering in the same way out of that, like you do. Yeah. So, you know, we, 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 are, we are the same in, in the same position altogether. And yeah. I cannot carry all this burden on my shoulders, what generations of white male privilege has done to the world and still doing to the world. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm with all of you in the same boat. Yeah. And I cannot being rejected because I'm part of this projection. Yeah. Yeah, and therefore I created the somatic consent dynamic mm. that is based on the structure not of the wheel of consent, but of the structure where the wheel of consent got created from, and that's from Harry Fedders' the three minute game. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, and that's a really important distinction to make because Harry Fedders is a male, a white male, mm. and um, he's a gay man, and he created the three minute game in a BDSM workshop on power, intimacy and surrender. So one of the workshops that I've done in Ibiza. Yeah. And there's a really, really important piece because in this structure, there's one specific dynamic that is when I am in action for myself, I give my power to the other person's development and structure. Mm that the other person can surrender to a bigger power than mm. themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And when that was clicking in, the somatic consent engagement system got created and born because there's a meta level that we have to access when we are in a position of power. Mm. So when we are in a position of power, then it's not about taking advantage out of the other person. It's not about using or misusing another person beyond their limits. It's we're giving our gift of power from this meta perspective for mm. another person to have a deeper experience about themselves. Mm. And that's a really, really important piece. Could you give an example of that? For, um, well, what we'll do is uh, it, hopefully it'll be possible to have some links to these things, yeah. the three-minute game. 
Could you give like a really short example of what that might look like? Would that be even possible for someone who's like, what's the three minute game and what's the what 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 is he what does this look like about the power and yeah, just what would be involved? What would the yeah. scene look like, perhaps? So so what I've written a book, and in this book is everything in detail. So mm. Uh, you can get it on Amazon or you can download it from the page. Everybody who is reading it, everything is written down in there. If you want to know more, everything is in there. So yeah. so this an, an example um, about that is, so the three-minute game comes from the background of BDSM. Mm. What is bondage, dominance, submission, and... Um, um, masochism. Um, M is for masochism. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm not a fan of all of them, but I've played my fair share in this kind of dynamic to understand the three-minute game in its core. Mm. But when you see in the structure of dominance, dominance mm. and submission, specifically for women and for men as well, but most women I'm working with, they're having this masculine shield. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So they have this masculine structure of protection and dominance to um, um, uh, defend themselves in a way, mm -hmm. yeah? And they cannot loosening up, they cannot softening up. So they are more masculine than most men in mm -hmm. some cultures. So, um, and specifically in BDSM, when you see um, women of this kind entering this field, they have this hunger and longing to surrender. Mm -hmm. And they cannot surrender to their own masculine energy because this is literally their defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. So what they're looking for is for a for a for a dominant position from a, from the from, from the outside, who can make them surrender that they finally can let go of their control mechanism. Uh, yeah. And going into the it is a neurological state um, that is called. Um, immobilization when you're safe mm. yeah and this is how the nervous system of a female body is wired is immobilization being safe and this is that is, is surrender that that's is, surrender yeah. this is pure surrender and that's the idea behind that in the three minute game is when i can do what i want to you to a woman that the power that she gives to me Mm. That I use that power consciously not to suppress her, that I use that power consciously that she can find the place of surrender, mm. that she can finally let go to that strength that comes from my side. So, And mm. Harry Fettis talks about that, and I really love the way how he described that. I give my gift of power that you can finally enter that place of total surrender. And if I not give my gift of power, because if I can't feel you, mm. you will notice very fast that I'm a shit dom and you will fire me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, it just takes an extra awareness to be in this position, to be in that strength, but not to take advantage right. for the place of allowing you to find that place in yourself to let go. Mm. Yeah. And it's important because you said you you said that in, in this scene that we've created here where there's there's a man in the dominant position, there's there's a woman wanting to surrender, that she gives him that permission. Yeah, do, yeah, and that's right. really important. And this is where the consent piece is coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, without that. Without that, it won't work. Mm -hmm. This is so super and important. It feels, then what happens? Rape, some abuse, kind of abuse. And then you have all this kind of uh, projections of uh, re traumatization, of victimization, and the finger pointing. Uh, yeah. But this is another topic I can just yeah. go really. We'll do really another video on that one. <laughs> yeah. So, but I don't want to turn that around because I've been working with so many men. Specifically, like us as a practitioner and as a facilitator, mm. we, you know, we have mastered all this power, um, uh, dominant position to give that gift of power to somebody else that mm. they can finally surrender. So what that has created in us 
from the male perspective is a deep layer of integrity, mm. alignment, truth, authenticity. And from that perspective, we we holding our ground and we speaking truth. We don't hold back. We are in the position of just like alignment, just like we we, we can declare um, reality because mm. we just know it from the place of vibration. And women who actually have this desire of surrender, they can sniff us out and they know just like, okay, uh, I, I just want to give myself to you, have me and do whatever you think is right. I totally trust you with my life. Mm, and we're not taking advantage of that so we are in this position and this is a pitfall mm. because the more our vibration is rising here the harder it gets for us to be brought in that position of surrender because this is where we're missing out so much mm. that we have somebody on the other side that we can finally fulfill our own longing that we have to to surrender to a bigger power than mm. ourselves and mm. where do we go where do we go that's a good point where do we go mm. and the, the more we evolve and develop the harder it is to find somebody mm. we can trust enough to who has the power who has the gift who has the skill mm. to take us on that journey that we can finally be vulnerable it raises the bar right it raises the bar and so this brings up an interesting point because there might be men listening now but I don't want to surrender. I'm like, I'm the man, right? Why would I want to surrender? Mine's about, my my thing is about power. I want to ravish a woman. But yet there was a, a long time in my life where I was afraid of my own power and I was afraid of ravishing. I was afraid of hurting because of my, the way I grew up in a very feminine household mm -hmm. um, and wanting to please women. And I had no idea that, at some point in my life that actually that was what was really desired was this this healthy power i just had no idea what it was and what it yeah. felt like in my own body yeah and then when i've as i've learned more about this and through my own development and then heard like well now it's time to learn about surrender i was like hey and it was such a powerful and profound place to go and it's it's changed everything but what would you say to these to men who are like, eh, this is all really confusing? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's go back to the three minute game. Yeah. Mm. And that that hopefully makes it really clear. So mm. the structure of the three minute game is a is a neurological mirror of our capacity of being with another. Mm. So Harry Fedders, so the developer, he has a really big background on as a, as a coach, he knows about um, neuroscience. He has a background in spiritual and Sufism. And he has a very well deep background in the 12-step program. You know, mm -hmm. he's a recovered alcoholic and mm -hmm. he's helping people to get out of that position. Mm -hmm. And so he was breaking it down into human engagement in a very sophisticated, intelligent way. Mm -hmm. And the the way how he developed that that was in the bdsm workshop on power surrender and intimacy where he wanted to give people who joined there from a perspective of facilitation the same share of of, of experiences mm -hmm. specifically for us as facilitator mm -hmm. and it's important to me as well Normally, we think we have to provide so much and we have to teach the right things and we have to entertain them and we have to do all this kind of magic shebang. But he just totally flipped that around as facilitator to say that our responsibility is creating an environment that is safe enough mm -hmm. that people choose to have the experience that they want to have. And that's uh -huh. not our yeah. job. It's their job to find that out. And our job is to create the container that they can choose that. Mm. So and he figured out that the three-minute game is based on four components. Right. First of all, it just only calls the three-minute game because in three minutes, you can experience so much more when you have the right agreements than in an entire hour or two-hour or workshop when that what you want to happen is not happening. Mm. 
when you have just three minutes to get exactly what you need and want, mm. you're fulfilled. You don't need the rest of the workshop. <laughs> yeah. mm. It's just like you're getting a two-hour massage and you have this one spot there and you never communicate that and the massage therapist doesn't know. And they're <laughs> going over that spot for, you know, five seconds and then it's gone and you're just like, oh, fuck, can't you be stay longer there? Yeah. You know? But that's the same thing when you can communicate. So I have that spot here. And can you please do such and such exactly at that spot? And you need maybe three or five minutes. And then the rest of the massage is a bonus, is an extra. You yeah. don't need the rest of it. And that's exactly why it costs a three-minute game. Because you get three minutes to get exactly what you ask for or you, what mm -hmm. you want. So, so he figured out that there are four components. Mm. The first component is you do what you want. Mm -hmm. The second one is, I do what I want. Mm -hmm. The third one is, you do what I want. Mm -hmm. And the fourth is, I do what you want. Yeah, wonderful. This is the end of human engagement in all cultures, in all languages, wherever I go, in every country, in, in every dynamic I've been teaching in. These yeah. four components there are vital. So when you speak in the position of power or man say, well, I'm in the position of power. I know what I want. This is the position you do what you want. Mm. Yeah. So if you do what you want, then you are in a position of power. If you only in that position and you anchor yourself only in that position, you miss out on the other three positions. Mm. Yeah. And the other position is exactly important as this one position. So if you do in proximity what you want, mm -hmm. then I let you do what you want. Mm -hmm. So I surrender to you what you want. And if you are in a position of power, I need to trust you. I need to trust my own limits that I can surrender to your power. And that's the position where we're all missing out on, mm -hmm. specifically people in power. But when we flip that around and I do what I want, mm -hmm you go into this position of surrender to my power. And then I just look, ah, let's see. What is it that I can do here that you finally can let go? And then I check in, hey, what is actually your limit here? What is it that you don't want to happen? And what's the frame I can play in that you have the experience of surrender? Mm. Yeah, this is so interesting because it brings up the, <clears throat> also, you know, that we all know this stereotype of your um, your high flying executive who's in total, you know, CEO, full power, yet he's going to a dominatrix and he's dressing as a baby or so. Like this is this is real. I've known a couple of dom dominatrix mm -hmm. in my life, and they've mm -hmm. they've told me. I remember seeing a documentary when I was quite young about this, and yeah. uh, it, it's a well known dynamic. And it it seems to me that maybe you're talking about that here. It's exactly the same, perfectly the same. So, so this this two dynamics that put them for a second on the park position, okay? Mm. And then you have the other two left is that I do what you want, mm. and then the other one that you do what I want. Mm. Yeah, and you know when I'm traveling around and teaching, there is a certain survival mechanism in most people. Mm. and a, a kind of a weak spot of um, oppression and mm. they're either victimizing themselves and they go into the pleaser and the oppressing dynamic and not saying no and mm. do for other people constantly that they're feed, being loved and appreciated mm. and that's the biggest disease in our western society or everywhere in the world uh, the power over dynamic. Yeah, I'm a poor victim. I'm oppressed and I do whatever people say or I just do whatever to make it right to people. I'm an obedient taxpayer. I'm an ob obedient uh, citizen. I, 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 I follow all the um, rules and regulations in society. I'm not using my own brain to think. I'm mm -hmm. just like, I'm, I'm do doing what's being told. Yeah. yeah? And that is being broken open by this very dynamic that I shared. The last one is just like, I do what you want within my limits. Mm. And I have limits. 
or to know what they are is really important and to know what they are or you do what i want so mm. let's say from this perspective i can ask for whatever i want you to do to me or for me yeah, yeah. if i'm <laughs> the answer is yes <laughs> well this is this is the thing this is the thing if you know if i'm in a position of that power as well Yeah. And you do what I want, and I'm, you know, in the BDSM structure, I would be the master and you would be the servant here. Yeah. If I don't have your highest good in mind, mm. if I'm a shit dom, if I'm oppressive, and I I, I, I tell you to do something that would harm you, mm. then I'm not giving my gift of power. Mm. Yeah. And so, if I allow you to ask to... You can ask me, but if I do something that is actually not something that I want. Yeah. For, for, for example, um, th there are different ways of communication that I could come up with. You know, I could be demanding. I could be um, requesting. I could be inviting. I could be uh, dictating. Just like, okay, Steve, stand up and make a handstand, get naked, and clap your feet. Do that now. Mm. Yeah, so I would be demanding and 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 you could say, Hey, I can't do that. And it's just like you're a fucking loser. You can't even make a fucking headstand. Just like get on your fucking head and just do that. You know? mm -hmm. So that would not be appropriate mm -hmm. because there would not play happening, there would not development happening. Unless we've had a conversation beforehand where this has come up, right? Hey, well, You know, in a in in a in a dynamic between a sub and a dom, it could be that way. But when I'm talking about consent, I'm talking about the um, legitimate communication skills and proximity mm. in the relationship that is here right now. Just like, hey, I have a I, I have a proposal. You would you like to try that? Mm. Yeah. And you can say at any time, no, when you feel like there is something that you're not feeling comfortable with. Mm. I still have the desire you to do that, but you express wherever you feel you reach your limit that you say no or stop or pause. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And you can just give it a try. Just like to see how far I can guide you making a headstand and clapping with your feet. Would you like to try that? See, this I would try. When you asked yeah. me before, I was like, no fucking way. Yeah, right. So Now you so, ask me like this, I'm like, oh, I could try that. So, so the conversation is, the communication is really, really vital in here. And this is what the somatic consent engagement system is teaching in the roots and in the core of this proximity engagement. And when this is in place, yeah. neurologically, emotionally, and mentally, we can create any scenario in any moment that is possible with another person where we're winning together. There's yeah, no winning. I thinking, everybody yeah. gets what they want when right. communication is consent-based. Right, right. So this is kind of the, the, the kind of um, uh, frame around that, you know, the, 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 the raw structure. But mm. now I would like to go back to these two parking positions of power. I do what I want and you do mm. what you want. Yeah. And this is really interesting. And Betty Martin and Harry Fettis have an interview about that. That's somewhere yeah. in the internet where they're talking about this position of power. Mm. And as I know Harry Fettis and I know Betty Martin, I came to the conclusion that they're actually both speaking two different languages. Ah. They're both American, but they speak two different languages. Ah. And it's really interesting to um, observe, but only capable to hear when you know what the language is. Mm. Yeah. So Harry Fettis is speaking from the BDSM perspective of the position of power. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, I do that to you so that you can surrender to a greater power than yourself. Mm. And having this spiritual divine experience of unity and merge into oneness mm. yeah and betty That's martin great. But what is great is important it's needed and mm. betty martin speaks about the structure in um i do what i want 
in relationship to the object. Mm. And Great. that's that's the that's the important piece is because when like we did the exercise in the beginning when you feel it and which i'm still doing by the way yeah <laughs> me too so when you feel that this way mm. what you do is you create this oxytocin pathway that is related to our early childhood development with our caregiver mm -hmm. the development of our social engagement with our mother through breastfeeding through touching hugging warm feeling cuddling connecting mm -hmm. yeah so when i'm having that in place and when my skin sensually and even though sexually is activated then i'm reaching out to the other person where i do what i want to do and i use my entire body my entire skill including my genitals including my mouth including my hands everything as a sensual resource for oxytocin mm. to do what i want to fill up my cup within your limits mm. it has nothing to do with hitting it has nothing to do with pinching it has nothing to do to get a response or reaction out of you that gives me gratification mm. it has nothing to do to do something to you to make me feel better it has to do with my capacity to feel myself on another person mm. and that's independent of gender mm. sexual orientation mm. or color skin or age or anything else mm. so betty martin speaks about this dynamic in that interview and he has no understanding of this dynamic and <laughs> she has no understanding <laughs> in that interview of his dynamic i'd love and, to find this interview it and great. it's really really interesting <laughs> and i was watching and, and listening to that interview and i was thinking they both needs to be combined mm. yeah and that's where the structure of the somatic consent engagement system got created mm. where this is a developmental upward spiral well, we're entering after practicing this specific, very dynamic for, I don't know, a few times with different people, we're entering an interpersonal space, space of love and care for each other. Mm. And when we're entering this place, then we can use our power of love and care mm. for other people to thrive with us together. It just creates this winning situation and mm -hmm. there's a specific communication structure and dynamic behind that and that allows people to um, dissect and identify in any engagement whatever people say whatever mm -hmm. is being said to reflect upon mm -hmm. it gives a metacognitive position like a meta position that allows to see and to feel and here comes the interesting thing and i have researched that in in any detail you can find mm. this oxytocin thing so this feeling it when we're slowing it down enough it kind of short circuits in the brain your motor so your action and your sensory cortex so there is a kind of a, like an an overlapping happening when you do that shortly enough and that is actually activating a part in your brain this is the so-called insula mm -hmm. and this part is responsible for empathy and compassion and being capable of feeling into others and sensing where they are that you can give your gift of power in relationship for somebody else's mm -hmm. development I hope this is not too high what I'm explaining here and that no. people can follow what no, I'm, I'm saying. I'm getting the picture here where it's then there is some relationship between the two people where where it can be sensed on some level yes. where the person is. So yes. then the need for verbal communication maybe is is perhaps a little bit less. But you enter a space there where it's not about me just coming and getting what I want and then leaving. It's a, a feedback loop from both yeah. people that brings them into bliss 
that gives them both what they want. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Neurologically spoken, you know, it is the space of co-regulation. Mm -hmm. We co-regulating in an upward spiral. This is where lovemaking is happening. You know, <clears throat> yeah. this is where we all want to go. We all want to merge into this oneness yeah. and feeling connected to this divine source with our lover, you know, mm -hmm. in the best case. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's just only a quickie, but... but Which is also okay. <laughs> it's also okay. <laughs> but, you know, in the deepest longing, just like, hey, I just want to merge there as often as mm -hmm. I can, as long as I possibly yeah. can with you. And, you know, my physical health, you know, my, you know, doing workout and having a good nutrition and feeling in connection. I do that because I just want to go there as often as I can. Yeah. And <clears throat> you know, the, this, this longing to be in connection, especially around the times of COVID, you know, has brought up a huge amount of loneliness and like a client that I was working with the other day, we realized that he, he actually gets no physical content uh, mm. um but no physical contact on a daily basis and it's been like that since he was a really young child yeah it's devastating he's, he's wondering yeah he's wondering why why he is so unable to regulate himself in social situations yeah Yeah, touch deprivation is one of the biggest <clears throat> diseases in society specifically as you said through covid just like just like have two meters distance you know this is it's a funny joke i just want to make that here because yeah. i'm in sweden for those who are watching this video in like 20 years time and they're like covid you know <laughs> yeah right just like well covid is just like when i watch that in 20 years time just like you had to had a distance about two meters it would it got kind of put on us from the authority to prevent the infection of a disease that might never existed so <laughs> so anyway it's it has been said that we have to have you know this mask in two meters up, uh, distance yeah and being here in sweden this th they have this conditioning of uh anti-proximity you know mm. so so when 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 there was all of a sudden this kind of worldwide demand on two meters distance ah, they were already doing it <laughs> that that got all in panic it's just like what now we have to go on two meter distance because they're used to five meter distance <laughs> <laughs> so saying it that way so um yeah. to yeah. this specific client you were talking yeah. about in touch uh, deprivation yeah this is one of the most <clears throat> most important um dynamics to come back to your own skin and into your own body and proximity because it's so vital yeah. yeah and it doesn't matter if um what the age is you know of course it can come with some feelings of awkwardness and shame and embarrassment and not knowing how to behave because the social skills yeah. they never have been there but they can be learned yeah you know the interesting thing is with this little exercise here with this object Yeah. Doing that for three months on a daily basis depends on the intention where people want to go with that. Through this release of oxytocin, um, we can rewire our neurological pathways and heal back into social um, uh, uh, dynamics that never have been there before. So there is this structure of neuroplasticity in our nervous system The kind of neurons that uh, uh, fire together, wire together. Yeah. So when we do this oxytocin neurological pathway, we can re-establish this neurological pathways of mm. proximity and of connection. And specifically in this very case that you shared about this one client, mm. when this exercise is happening in proximity, and this is where the professionalism of my work kicks in, in mm. my sessions, in the three-minute game, Yeah. If somebody is coming through my door in my practice or people that I have educated, we can teach people who never have tried that by starting to touch the object mm. and then for three minutes allow yourself to use your hand to touch another person for yourself mm. and allow the shame, the the awkwardness, the 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 inequity all this feeling that holding us back to feel 
feel them, let them all come up, and it takes some time. They burn. You burn through them, and it you needs can, time and space, right? You can't do this quickly. Yeah. And you can relearn mm. to feel. Mm. And the same when it comes to erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation or all these kind of sexual issues, when you can learn to feel with your cock. Mm. And you don't hunt the goal, you don't hunt the reward, you don't hunt the release. Mm. And you start feeling again, you're getting present. You can heal any sexual issue that mm. you have based on any stuff that you have put on top of the incapability mm. of connection and love and sensuality. Mm. So it's just like as if you're building an under layer of oxytocin related mm. engagement on any structure and your logical rewire your brain and your nervous system into this place of connection of love and care and mm. this is what's well, so profound i love that so much so what what i'm hearing you say is that nothing is ever lost like nothing there is nothing. it doesn't matter where you are like this client that i had wasn't even aware of how that the his almost zero physical contact, even with family members, <clears throat> but actually it was actually something wrong, that his body needed it. So for anybody who's having any kind of issues related to contact, related to intimacy, related to social engagement, what I hear you saying is it is possible to learn the stuff that we perhaps didn't learn when we were younger and lead a more fulfilled, connected, love marinated life which is actually what we all want right yeah and it just comes up when you say that it's so interesting so there's one percent of humanity is not capable of feeling that mm. and these are psychopaths right they everybody thinks that... they've dated a psychopath in their past <laughs> You, you know, like as, as clinical like, psychopaths it's, is what you know. It's a, it's it's an it's an it's a really sincere damage of the brain. So yeah. this part that is responsible for <laughs> empathy and compassion is irreparable damaged. Yeah, yeah. So and they have no capacity to feel themselves or feel other people. It's always about themselves. Yeah, and they're always trying to get the advantage, and they're always trying to get more out of people. And this one percent of people they are probably ruling the world and they don't give a fuck about anybody else because they're not capable right they're incapable but un unfortunately as far as i can tell most of them they are in a position of power mm. and i just had a conversation with somebody else who had this had a similar structure is you know there are there are two two specific um um uh, kind of brands of humans who cannot go there in empathy, in compassion, in love and care and being with another. One mm. of them are psychopaths and the other one are dead people. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and you oh, I, take and, a test for all you listeners out there. Take a test. If you're not a psychopath, there is hope, right? There is hope. You know, 99% of us is capable of um, re-establishing our capacity. And it doesn't matter where you are in your life. It doesn't yeah. matter how stuck you feel. It doesn't matter how much agony and pain you have of mm. that, what you have not had in your life. Uh -huh. You know, if, if you are not one uh, of the 1%, the yeah. chance is pretty high that you're one of the 99%. And there's absolutely hope to just like re- calibrate your nervous system and your capacity to feel to yeah. communicate to practice consent and coming back into alignment with what you're here for and that is just like feeling connection ah wow, wonderful and so obviously if they read your book they this they're gonna have some help there and i'm just wondering now about um where people can find you because we'll put all your links on the uh, on the page on come up may and um yeah, just I've I've seen your YouTube video channel, which has got some great resources on there, some really, really great resources already for, for free. So yeah. yeah, where can people find you? What's coming up for you next? So the easiest way to find me is somaticconsent.com. So one word. 
-hmm. And I have kind of narrowed down the landing page now into very simple structure and mm -hmm. guide from there into an uh, online course that calls the foundation of enhanced pleasure. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when people landing of that on that page, there are either kind of this online course in five modules where can people practice themselves or, and that's the Somatic Consent Academy that I've created, where we're creating an online connection. So mm. where we're meeting once a week for 90 minutes and talking with each other about this structure, you know, feeling ourselves and being in connection and mm. where do we struggle playing the three minute game with other people. Mm. And it's a close private network that is far away from the kind of noise of Facebook and Instagram. You know, this is, mm -hmm. is, is really private and connected. And mm -hmm. it's just a one-time shot for 400 bucks and people can be there forever and right. making friends all over the world. Mm -hmm. And um, so somaticconsent.com is probably the easiest way to find access. And on the webpage- yeah, Your book is on there also? They can find yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a button under more where people find the books. You can download that and share that with others or you can mm -hmm. have the- you know, a real physical book you can order on Amazon. You mm. can order um, a free 45-minute introduction session and just figure out if this is actually resonating with you, what I'm saying, and just checking mm. out if we are a match. And if you want to work with me on any kind of level, mm. intimately, sexually, relational, structured, or even if you just want to step into your life purpose and anchor your you know, your life uh, direction in, in your daily life, I'm available and mm -hmm. just come and check me out and just see uh, who I am and let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Find that all on the webpage, somaticconsent.com. Uh, right. Well, I can say after meeting you at the Ibiza Tantra Festival and, and our connection and coming to one of your workshops, Consent is Sexy, which I thought was amazing. And just connecting with you as a human being, I just I find you super accessible and super present and really an inspiration because there's very few men that I meet who are who have this presence and this vulnerability, but also hold this this very strong masculine aspect. So um, I love how you are combining these two aspects of the masculine and feminine energies in one work is the way that I feel it. And I wish you all the best. And I really hope that our connection continues. So thank you for taking the time out of your mm. lovemaking and your daily practice to, um, to spend some time with me. And yeah, I really love you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you for inviting me. And I hope everybody who's listening, getting the benefit out of that. And um, yeah, live your life. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye, Matt. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Mm, wonderful.